Uh, hey students, this is Zhao. Uh, this is the second of two vi videos describing how to create a solo model in Excel on your computer. Uh, in the first video, uh, we set up the bare bones of the model, and we saw uh, the variables that our model tracks converging towards their steady state values. Um, our goal in this video will be to add shocks to our model. Um, and what these shocks will enable us to do is to stimulate the economy with some sort of change to one of the underlying parameters of the model, and then to see how the economy reacts. And the goal of these changes will, to be induce, will be to induce something in our simple economy that looks like a recession, that looks like a business cycle fluctuation. Yeah. Um, now, okay, in order to do this, okay, um, the first step, let me delete these two columns. These will come later. Okay, this is what you should have right now. The first first step of uh, of this is to set uh, our parameter values and our initial value of capital um, equal to a steady state. Okay, now uh, the the parameter values uh, that I want you to use for this part of the of the assignment are a little bit different from what we were looking at uh, in the previous part. Okay, so go ahead and I, I have these written down right here in this file, which you have access to. Okay, so set the savings rate equal to 0 0.75, set the technology parameter equal to 1, diminishing returns equal to 0 0.5, and the depreciation rate equal to 5%. Okay, um, so go ahead, put those numbers in, and then change your value of capital so that, in, that your period 0, your initial value of capital is 225. Okay, and what you'll see when you do this is that uh, at these parameter values, uh, having a capital level of 225 units is a steady state. Okay? And so that if you put, put 200, 225 here, the n value of capital simply stays at 225. Right? We know that if you switch it to a value below this, okay, value, the value of capital will rise until it hits this 225 number. Okay, but if we just start at 225, it stays at 225. That's the definition of the steady state. Now, so uh, after you do this, okay, so we're going to start off the economy in the steady state. And this, it's going to be in that situation for 10 periods. And in period 11, we're going to apply the shock. Okay, so how do you do this? So go ahead and, and insert two columns, okay, immediately to the right of your depreciation column. Okay, so I'm going to insert one column. And then I'm going to insert a second column. Okay. Now this first column, uh, let me widen this a little bit. This first column I'm going to call technology. Okay. And by the way, to widen, if you want to widen a column so that it so that it uh, includes the full length of the word, just select the space between the column and then just double click that, and it'll automatically widen the space of the column. So we have depreciation. We're going to insert a new column called technology, and we're going to insert another new column called the size of shock. Okay. And then we're going to insert a new parameter here. You guys don't have this yet. So underneath depreciation rate, we're going to insert a new parameter called decay rate of shock. Okay. And we're going to set that value, set the initial value of that parameter equal to 0.9. Okay. okay. So then we're gonna we're gonna make our shock. Okay, so as I said, for this first ten periods, there's not going to be any shock. Uh, the economy will simply be in the steady state. So for the size of the shock, I want to put zero for the first ten periods. Okay. Then in period eleven, we're gonna actually we're gonna we're gonna hit the economy with this shock. And you go, how big are we gonna make this shock? Okay. Well, for now, let's um, let's go ahead and make that value. Let's go ahead and make that value one. So it was zero, the size of shock was zero, and all of a sudden in period 11 it becomes one. And then in the subsequent periods, okay, for the periods after period 11, the value of the shock will simply be equal to this value, equal to one, so I want to select this value, times the decay rate of the shock, 0 0.9. Uh, so select 0 0.9. Okay. Now, just like before, this is very important. You want to after you uh, after you code in this decay rate of shock. You want to press select that K6, okay, and press F4, okay. Well, that's going to put these dollar signs in front of K6, and that's going to make it so that this box doesn't shift downwards, okay, as we fill this column downwards. It'll make it so we always use 0 
as the decay rate of the shock, which is what we want. Okay. So then you'll notice in the next period, it's 0 0.9. If I take this number and I drag it down, you'll see that each time it multiplies the previous value of the shock by 0 0.9. So what, the, what this does is it causes the size of the shock to diminish to 90% of its previous value in every single period. Well, if you think about that, if you keep taking 90% of a number, 90% of a number, eventually that number is going to go, go down to zero. And that's what we're going to hope to see. If I fill this all the way down, okay, so to fill something, uh, so let's just drag this all the way down. Okay. Go down to the bottom of our table. Okay, and you see that this number quickly diminishes to a value very close to zero. You see these numbers are effectively, you know, 10 to the negative 14th. That's effectively zero. Okay. And in fact, if I tell it, if I set this uh, to display this as a number, so if I set the format here, okay, you can see that it displays only two decimal points and past period 60, uh, the size of our shock has essentially become zero. Okay? So, okay, so that's the first thing. I'll set programming the size of the shock itself. The next thing that we want to do is we want to actually make this matter in our model. Okay, so what we're going to do, the first thing that we're going to do is notice before what we had was a technology parameter A, and the value of this parameter was always equal to 1. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to make the value of this technology equal to uh, 1 plus the size of our shock. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is equal to our initial value for technology here. Okay, and then again, after I do that, I'm going to press F4, so we lock that cell, so that cell never changes. And then I'm going to say that plus the size of our shock over here to the right, and press Enter. Okay, so now note, in the second period, the size of the shock, or rather in the first period, the size of the shock is zero, okay, and so... The level of technology is just the default level of technology, 1. But if I fill this downward, okay, now I can actually double click this to fill it downward. What you see is that the size of technology is 1, it's 1, it's 1, it's 1, it's 1. And then all of a sudden, since the size of the shock becomes 1 in period 11, our technology has gone from 1 to 2. Okay, so we double the level of technology, but then as the shock diminishes away, we see that this simply returns back to its original value of 1. Okay, so that's the second step. So we filled in the size of the shock, and then we filled in the technology as simply our default value plus the size of that shock. Okay, the last thing that we need to do is to tell the model, to tell the rest of our model to refer to this value of technology instead of only referring to this constant value over here. Okay? And the way we do that is follows. Remember how technology enters into our model. Okay. So the way that technology enters into this model is that it determines how much output we produce as a function of the level of capital we have in the model. And specifically in this model, okay, the, the amount of output we produce is equal to the capital raised to the power lowercase a, which is this, which is this diminishing returns parameter here, okay, times the parameter capital A, which is our value of technology. Okay. Now the way this is currently set up, let me expand this, the way this is currently set up, you can see the output, right, is equal to the level of capital here in green, raised to the power of the 0.5 in purple, and then times the technology parameter in blue. Okay, so we want to do two things here. One is we want to unlock this value. And to unlock this value, you simply go click inside and delete those, uh, delete those dollar signs. Okay, so now this value is going to change when we drag this cell around. Okay, and then you see how right now it's referring to this A here. What I want to do is I want to select that box. You select the box just by, by mouse overing the edge of that box. You'll see your cursor turns into a little arrow direction indicator. Okay, and so we no longer want our model to use only this level of technology 1. Instead, what we want to do is we want to use this value of technology in the column that we just created. Okay, so I'm going to press Enter. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to update that column downwards. Okay, and so you see what happens is each time, instead of using this parameter 1 over here, it's going to use this value over here. Now, of course, for the ten, first 10 periods, nothing happens because that value is what it was over here. It's 1. But then starting from, the, starting from period 11, okay, there's a change. All of a sudden, technology becomes 2, 
Okay, and the rest of our economy begins to respond. Okay, okay. so if you have these graphs, and you should still have these graphs from before, you'll be able to see uh, you'll be able to see uh, what's going on. Now, the only thing to add, though, you do want to add an additional graph, and the additional graph that you want to uh, add is the value of this parameter itself. You want to you want to graph how technology is changing over time, so just so you know what is being input into this model in order to cause the shock. Okay, you want to be able to see the size of the shock, in other words. Okay, so what we want to do is I want to insert a graph. So I want to select column A, press Control, and select our parameter that's being shot, technology. And then we want to go ahead and insert a scatter plot. And we insert, you can choose either this one or this one. It doesn't really matter. Okay, there's our shock. Okay. Okay, so you can see that this change in technology, this shock, is what drives all of the subsequent changes in our model. Because in period 10, technology spikes to twice its normal value, our, the amount of capital in our economy also begins to increase. Now, of course, this, the change isn't immediate, okay? because greater technology leads to more output, and the more output causes you to accumulate more capital over time. So we get this shock in period 11, and then capital goes up, it goes up, it max out at a particular value, and then as technology returns back to its original value, the value of capital also goes back down to its original value. Okay. Now these other variables here okay, respond immediately. They respond immediately because they are directly a function of the technology. Okay, so for example, the amount of output in any given period is just directly a function of the level of technology in your economy. So here we see that sudden spike. Okay, so we see a sudden spike in output, we see a sudden spike in investment, and we see a sudden spike in consumption. Now those three variables moving together, okay, all going up at the same time, that's what, you, what we observe in the real world during an economic boom. Okay? We see output, investment, and consumption all, uh, all uh, going up. Okay? Now we can also change the, the, the nature of our technological shock. Okay? So for example, if right here we set the, we set 